please be seated. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Bishop Kate and I'll be leading the service today. Um, and we also have Bishop Philip who knows the family well and Father Chaplain. Uh, so it is our privilege to be here today. But of course, none of us wants to be here. For we are only here because Barnaba is no longer with us. Yet of course, we are here showing our love and care for this grieving family. And we want and need to honour Bar Barnaba. So on behalf of the family, I thank you for gathering here today to pray for and to grieve and to give thanks for the life of Barnaba Agani Guy and to offer our heartfelt thoughts and prayers before God for a son, a brother, a relative and friend. Barnaba, young, intelligent, full of potential. At this altar, we will share in the living bread of our Lord Jesus Christ, whose own life and death and rising again showed the world that God's love is present with us in every circumstance, including the tragedy of Barnabas' death. It has been a long time not knowing, not knowing where Barnabas was, not knowing if he was safe, not knowing if he was alive. And I want to acknowledge the cost of this to Barnabas' family, to Daniel and to Daruku. To be burying your child seems the most unbearable of tragedies. As it is for you, Barnabas, brother and sister, sisters, and also for the other children who are not able to be with us at the funeral today. To say goodbye to your big brother, your little brother. Barnaba will always be your beloved son and your loved brother. Bishop Philip and I also want to acknowledge that you all come from a culture that knows tragedy and danger and uncertainty. A culture that knows and has experienced so much suffering. And I imagine that you came to Australia believing there would be the hope of a new start. Well, Barnaba, this hope has been cut short too soon. In your grief, you are held in the palm of God's hand, who knows the depths of your sorrow, and whose gospel of hope is one that is found in suffering. It's a hope that emerges out of the suffering Jesus himself experienced. This is our Easter hope that says there is no pain that is without the promise of resurrection. I also here acknowledge the Reverend Don Edgar, beloved priest and long-term mentor, mentor and friend to Daniel and the family. He is unable to be here himself because he's unwell and in hospital. And I know that uh, you know how much he will regret not being here today. Of course, there are many others who would have been joining with you all but have been prevented from doing so because of the COVID-19 restrictions. And so I invite you all to offer your thoughts and feelings and prayers before God. And as we pray to the Lord of both the dead and the living, may we all know that peace which passes all understanding. And so we have come together 
to thank God for the life of Barnaba Agani Guy, to mourn and honour him, to lay to rest his mortal body, and to support one another in grief. We face the certainty of our own death and judgment. Yet Christians believe that those who die in Christ share eternal life with him. Therefore, in faith and hope, we turn to God, who created and sustains us all. We now sing another song. resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Those who believe in me, even though they die, yet will they live. For I'm convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. The second candle is to represent our courage to confront our sorrow, to comfort each other, to change our lives. The third candle here, as we light, is in your memory. For the times we laugh, the times we cry, your commitment to learning and making a difference, the caring and joy you give us. And the final fourth candle here is for love. We light this candle 
that your light will always shine as we enter this set time and share this day of remembrance with family and friends. We cherish a special place in our hearts that will always be reserved for you, Barnabas. We thank you for the gift you are loving and living brought to each of us. So will you join me in praying together? Loving God, you alone are the source of life. May your light and spirit flow through us and fill us with compassion one for another. In our sorrow, give us the power of all things. Give us the hope and let our grief give way to joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Um, I thank you all for coming here. We check a moth where you been. We check a late. The bench where been can't take. The pira gang. Um, I will not talk much. I think the deed will well. Um, I think the thing to God just the other day uh, when I was thinking about Barnaba. So these are the words that I wrote when I was thinking of my brother, Baranava guy. So for many years, I would not believe that I'll be standing here today to speak about Baranava death. Thank you again for coming and for the incredible support that you guys have given us during these dark times. Baranava was my best friend. Um, he was my advisor, he was my partner, and most importantly, he was my younger brother. He was loved by many, and many were quickly, were lucky to have known him. My brother embodies everything that was great, intelligence, compassion, and humbleness. He possessed the core humility which I am inspired by. From the day he was born, he was always there for me. He was the best brother I could ever ask for. Even if life separates us, um, I believe that he will always be there for us. Your soul will continue to soar through the air that we breathe. I'm sad. I'm, self, I'm selfish that now I have to use our memories to wipe my tears. Like the time we played football or the time we successfully ran a few internet businesses or the time that we used to walk more than 30 kilometers in Kakuma refugee camp. Um, you, was, you, were, you was always better than me. Barnaba was always better than me. He was faster than me, way smarter. And God looked around his gun and found an empty place. He then looked upon the earth and saw his face. With the help of, of angel, God has lifted you up to the heavenly place. I will not stop at nothing for you. Baranaba, um, I love you, brother.
once again we chat and they it. Kekarwa can realize that although a gany ran, kigin yan, a chairan ki thought a long walk. Eran bitual Eran bitual wop your a chairan boy I forget. Okay. As I begin, one thing that I realized because like John, I never thought that I would be standing up here speaking about my brother or any of my siblings, my parents, anyone that has passed. One thing that I realized about our family and I, especially us children, is that <laughs> we never take photos. We really, really dislike photos. I feel that we were always trying to live in the moment and we never felt the need for them. Although there are so many of us, it didn't, I didn't feel the need for photos until it hit me. I was trying to make a photo slide for a guy and I found myself thinking that we should have done more. We should have always tried to capture all those moments that we shared together as a family. We have siblings all the way to the age of four, Abraham, and I'm upset that we can't be able to showcase our brother as well as we could have because all the memories remain in our heads rather than in photos. Like me, my brother was a very hard-headed, stubborn person, but nonetheless, he was one of the sweetest people you'll ever meet. When I was interviewing my younger siblings about what they wanted me to write today since they could not be here, all these common traits kept popping up. They constantly said that they loved his confidence and that he was always there for them as their playmate. They loved that, they loved that he was always focused and his ability to always be three steps ahead of anything he tried. They loved being able to play sports with him. They loved being able to play games with him. Although from, the, from his demeanor, he seems like a very cold person, but when it comes to kids, he is one of the sweetest people you'll ever see. He would all, especially one, um, when, they, uh, when they're babies, he would always be there just playing with them, just getting them stuff to the point that I remember just thinking back on what to write and I just broke down crying when Abraham had stated that, oh, Baranaba is my friend. Just something as simple as that just makes me teary when I realize how true it actually is. As we were growing up, since there was a really big age difference between my eldest brother and I, I was very much closer to, to Baranaba. I remember the way that I would always be told off for the stupid things that I would do, but although he used to lecture me, he always used to show me ways to do it better. I remember forcing myself into the soccer club and after school sports just because I didn't want to go home early and just because I wanted to hang out with him. I remember those times where I would hurt myself just trying to be sporty because I'm not a sporty person. He would teach me how to do cartwheels and just how to just not hurt myself as much as I was trying to do stuff. <laughs> he was always there for me, even at times where I would never respect. I never realized how much I really did look up to him until I realized how much I did follow in his footsteps. I would do the same subjects as him, heck I even followed him to the same high school, which is... <laughs> He's someone that I really look up to. Although we are deeply saddened that he is no longer here with us. I'm also glad that he is in the hands of the Lord. And although heaven has gained another angel 
although heaven has gained another angel way too soon, I hope that I hope that one day we will be able to reunite with them. Good morning. Uh, I'm really very happy with you, Guy, for the support you have done to my family and to me. Thank Bishop Kett, thank Bishop Agen, thank Father Chaplin, Father Peter, and the all who are coming here, my brother, Father Shab, uh, Roland, you are all welcome as my community. The what you have done to uh, our family, we will not forget you at all. And we will be remember you, what you have done in our life. Thank you, uh, Frank. Thank you, Linda. And, and my brother, who is pretty here in, in Holy Apostle, this is the church of Barnaba. <sighs> to be going ahead, I say, Lord, remember me. Lord, remember my history. You know everything about me. Barnaba, Barnaba, I will not tell you about how is Barnaba, but I say to Barnaba, I was not as back you, my son, to bury you, I thought you will bury me. It happened like this. It will be remain painful in my whole life because I was thinking that not to bury you without knowing what the cause of your death and what day you are living and you die. I brought you here in this nation for your future. I was not affected that to leave me alone. But now I rest in peace. God be with you. Thank you. Jesus said to Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, 
Yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not driven to despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying in the body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be made visible in our bodies. For while we live, we are always being given up to the death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus may be made visible in our mortal flesh. So death is at work in us, but life in you. So we do not lose heart because we look not to what can be seen, but what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. In the name of God, Amen. Our text, I am the resurrection and the life, Jesus says to us today. And three little reflections, text and context. The context of this beautiful family now full of grief, the context of our culture, and thirdly, the context of eternity. Our context is multi-layered. We're in Holy Apostles where Barnaba, with his family and his dear father, faithfully worship God Daniel, priest in the Church of God, honouring the vision given to him even before this church had been built, that he should come here and build a congregation on this spot. A vision that he honoured to the point where the congregation grew so large it overcame and overwhelmed the physical constraints of the building and the location. A context in which Barnaba worshipped and, as I recall poignantly, the place of his confirmation. As I prayed the Holy Spirit to send upon him that he be strengthened in God's Holy Spirit. As Bishop Kate knows, it's a very special moment of grace to confirm the child, the children of one's priests. Our priests always have a, a lovely and a proud vulnerability as they present those whom they love and have nurtured and bring forward for confirmation. And when it's their own child, they may try not to show any 
favouring, but you see the joy kind of slip, <coughs> slip through the cracks. And so it was that day in Holy Apostles as Daniel and Durica looked on. And we've just listened to those beautiful eulogies. And it's taken us deeper into the beauty of this family, their affirmations, John's affirmations of his intelligent, compassionate and humble brother, the memories of the playing football, the running a business together, all the way back to those 30 kilometers walking in that huge refugee camp, Kakuma, 30 kilometers yarning away together. And Elizabeth talking to her younger siblings to gather their thoughts so she could represent them well today, wishing there'd been more photos, recalling all the sweetness of Barnabas being the assurance he gave to them, uh, the delight in all the times they shared, following him to high school, him looking after her and Mary, hot chips on the way home from school, all those associations of a family, a beautiful family, here grieving today and our hearts go out to them as we look at the pictures of Barnaba, our hearts go out to them all. A second reflection on that text and context to do with our culture. Our context, as Bishop Kate said at the beginning, is a family, a family that came seeking refuge here and try to shape a life far from home, continuities and discontinuities, gratitude and sorrow, relief and struggle. Just three little reflections around our cultural context. As it happens, my work has been with people seeking refuge since the 1980s. When I was first ordained, my work was in the factories around Dandenong and Clayton, and my, my learnings came from families that had come to Australia seeking refuge. And some of them taught me to understand that it takes two or three generations at least for things to settle, for there to be adequate settlement and integration. And how tough that is for the kids. It's tough enough anyway for youngsters trying to make the transition from childhood through adolescence to adulthood of any culture, trying to work out who they are, who they, what they can do, what they can't do, where the possibilities are, all those sweet confusions of adolescence, but multiplied, multiplied for the children of those who've come here seeking refuge. There's a saying, and here's the second reflection, there's a saying, culture eats strategy for breakfast. Culture eats strategy for breakfast. And what it refers to is the power of culture, that we might have an intention, a strategy, but will the culture facilitate it or make it more difficult? Australia's strategy is to integrate and settle those who come here seeking refuge. But it depends on whether the culture really <coughs> lets that happen. And it depends on what is in the refugee culture that makes it problematic as well. The phrase Black Lives Matter 
hasn't come out of nowhere. It's a phrase that critiques cultures, cultures that have made life painful for people coming to a new place. I don't know, I simply do not know what kind of racism Barnum faced in his growing up as, as a young person he tried to find his way and his direction. I simply do not know but would not expect there was none of it. A third reflection on culture. The Gospel of Jesus critiques every culture. Every culture. And for us today, wondering how and what we can do to take forward from this tragedy something worthwhile, I can only put it so simply as this. Everything we have is a complete gift. God, the creator of all that is, gifts us with life on this tiny planet, in this completely vast universe, the end of which no one has yet found. On this beautiful planet, we're gifted with life and completely through forces beyond our control. The one who gifts us with this life makes us in his own image, all of us, in the carry the divine image and likeness. There's no us and them, there's only us. One human family on this planet, gifted with life. And all that the Creator asks of us is that we love one another and love God. And in this context, racism is a completely cruel folly. An absurd, cruel, cruel folly. From here, let us form the intention and take it to this Eucharist today that we will do everything we possibly can to make this culture a godly culture that reflects the gift of life. And may this be, perhaps, we pray, some way of carrying forward all the beauty of Barnaba in his short life as a way of marking a testimony, a moment of gratitude and an enduring consequence. May the people who follow Jesus do this together it's what our culture needs most, and most, most seriously. When Jesus told the disciples to gather after the resurrection, there weren't very many of them. And he said to them, go and change the world. Well, we're only asked to change Australia to start with. So let's see what we can do. And the third reflection about context is to do with eternity. Jesus' words, I am the resurrection and the life, were first uttered outside of Jerusalem in Bethany. There were tears then, tears streaming down faces at the tomb of Lazarus. And he said those words. Jesus is the one in whom all things hold together. The Alpha, the Omega, the beginning, the end. And what that means to us, what that means for us today is so simple and so profound and so important. What it means is that at the moment of Barnabas' death, whenever that was, at the moment of his death, he was entirely and completely loved by Jesus and aware of Jesus, the risen Jesus, 
bringing him comfort, giving him peace, taking him to the place that had been prepared for him. As Jesus promises all of us, I go to prepare a place for you. This is the deepest comfort of the gospel today, that at the moment of his passing, at the very moment of his passing, Barnabas was comforted. The peace of God which passes all understand was his. And he was taken to the place prepared for him, a safe place. This is our comfort of the gospel. As we gather, now take all of this that can be said, all that's still making its way into words, in the profound comfort of the sacrament, which is given to us, because God knows we reach a place where there are no words. And so we remember the Last Supper and in the breaking of the bread, we experience the grace of the real presence of the one who says to us, who says to us, I am. Who says to us, just as a matter of fact, I am the resurrection and the life. Let us pray with the confidence to God our Father, who raised Jesus Christ for the de from the death for the salvation of all. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of this young beloved man's life, Barnaba Agani Daniel. As humans, though we don't know, exactly the day he passed away. Being his creator, God, you know the day and how he passed away. With this sadness, bring us with him and all your faithful people to the fullness of the life you promised. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Gracious God, we thank you that you received Barnabas into the family of your church on earth and granted him the gift of eternal life. He ate with us the bread of life and drank from the cup of salvation. We thank you for your goodness to his short life in this uneasy, horrible world. Lord, in your mercy, God of all mercy, giver of all comfort, look graciously, we pray, on those who mourn, especially Barnabas' parents, Reverend Daniel Guy and his wife, Dorukas Akir Ajok, siblings, relatives, and friends, casting all their care on you in this difficult, stressful time. In the heartbreaking, and the soaking death of Barnabas, may they know the consolation of your love as you journey with them in this painful time of grief. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We praise you, Lord God, for your faithful servants in every age. May we with Barnabas and all who have died in faith of Christ 
be brought to a joyful resurrection and the fulfillment of your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, as our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are confident to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
through his resurrection from the dead, you have given us new birth into a living hope, into an inheritance which is imperishable, undefiled, and unfailing. With all your saints, we give you thanks and praise. The joy of resurrection fills the universe. And so we join with angels and archangels, with Barnabas and all your faithful people, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy God, God of our Almighty, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna.
those who believe in me, even though they die, yet will they live. Let us pray. Lord of life and death, we thank you that in your great love you have given us this foretaste of the heavenly banquet, prepared for all your sins. Grant that this sacrament of Christ's death may be to us a comfort in affliction, a firm assurance of his resurrection and a pledge of our inheritance in that kingdom where death and sorrow are no more, but all things are made new. On behalf of Barnabas' family, I'd like to thank Bishop Kate and Bishop Philip for holding today's service. At the conclusion, when we take Barnabas out to his final resting place, you are more than welcome to follow the herds. I ask that you put your headlights on and we'll all head to Werribee Cemetery. On behalf of Werribee Funerals, I'd like to thank Daniel for entrusting us to look after Barnabas. Thank you.